functions y equals sine x, y equals cosine x, and a little bit y equals tangent of x. If we have time. Um, so that's, that's what we often do. We learn about a new function, we work with it, we solve the equations, all that kind of stuff, and then we graph them. And we look at what the graphs do, and can we move them up, can we move them down, can we stretch them out, can we do these different kinds of things, okay? So today, we're essentially going to uh, graph them, stretch them vertically, stretch them horizontally, and see what it takes, okay? And then learn some vocab. All right, so when you graph the y equals sine of x, and y equals cosine of x, let me show you what they look like, what the shape of them looks like. It's like a wave. All right, so if you worked on that and you got anything like a wave, then great. If you didn't, that's all right. We're gonna get some more time to work on this in a sec. Okay. So this is called a sinusoidal wave, all right? And lots of things can be modeled by sinusoidal waves. We'll talk about that. Uh, if you split one of these sinusoidal waves down the horizontal middle, and we, have, we take our measurement, and that measurement has a name. The measurement is from this middle to the top of a wave, and that is called the amplitude. So we're going to look at the amplitude. We're going to say, what is the amplitude of this wave, and how can we change the amplitude of this wave, and what in the equation can give us a clue as to what the amplitude will be for this wave, okay. which is a handy tool when we're graphing them. So you'll notice, we're moving on past amplitude now, uh, you'll notice that this has a pattern. It goes, it makes the same shape over and over and over, okay? And when something happens over and over and over at a predictable time scale, like uh, the newspaper coming every day, we come every day, yeah. if you pay for it, it does, okay? Uh, the, the sun comes up every day at the same time of day, every day, pretty much. Um, what else? Or at least at the same time of day, at the same time of year, every year. Uh, what else happens on a schedule? What happens on a schedule like that? School starts at the Okay, the beginning of school day. starts the same time every day. Not every day. What? Not every day. Saturday and Sunday. Did I mean to do this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so when things happen in this way, they happen on the schedule, we say they happen periodically. Right, have you heard that? Even newspapers and magazines and things like that are even called periodicals. In Spanish, what is a newspaper? Or is it a magazine? I don't know. Is anybody in Spanish? Yeah. Isn't there a word like for either newspaper or yeah, magazine, like so. periodical, or something like that? I just yeah. learned it. Okay. I don't know, it was like first day of Spanish class. That's why it was so long ago and I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, I remember it vaguely. So it happens periodically, so that amount of time, I'm using quotes there, time, it's not really time here, it's, it's angles, but uh, the distance horizontally from say here to here, where it starts over again, or even from here to here, like an identical point on the next wave, right? Whichever points you choose as reference, that distance, that horizontal distance is the same, and that distance we call the period. That's the period of time that it takes, time again, I use it in quotes, the period of time that it takes to start repeating itself, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so we don't know anything specific about the amplitude of the period, <coughs> but we are going to investigate these waves and see what is the amplitude of this wave, what is the period of this wave. So to start with, we're going to graph y equals the sine of x, so I want you to keep going on that. All right. If you look on the horizontal axis, you see angles. Right? The x-axis represents an angle, or any point on the x-axis represents an angle. And vertically we see, well, for this case, the sine of that angle, the sine of x. x represents an angle, and then we take the sine of that angle, and then we graph the sine of that angle vertically. Okay. So back to your graph paper. Look at the angles. The angles, I gave you a special graph paper. The angles are marked in radians. Okay. The 
is where we get used to radians. We hardly ever graph these graphs with degrees. We graph them with radians. Okay. So work on that. Plot some points. See if you can figure out how that wave comes about. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, either you're you're making progress and, and you're ready to join, or or you're at the point where you need a little push forward. So let's do that. Um, get out my unit circle real quick. Uh, should have done this already. I think it's unit circle. Alright, so I got a unit circle to reference right there. Uh, I'm going to paint it so it doesn't get confusing. Uh, whoa, alright. That works okay. So we got our unit circle and we're going to put, we're going to use this to graph uh, the, the stuff, the sine of x. Let's start at zero. Zero radians. Where is zero radians? Zero. Right there. Sorry, sorry, right here. I'm used to pointing it backwards. So right here is zero radians. And what is the sign of zero radians? Zero. Zero, that's right there. It's the y of all of those uh, points around the unit circle. So zero radians, zero sign. It's just zero. Let's go to pi, since that's marked on the x-axis. Pi is all the way over here. What is the sign of pi? Uh, one. Zero. Try again. Zero. Oh. Half oh, well then you're right. But you need to listen harder. Okay. Two pi. What's the sign of two pi? Zero. It sounds like it's going to be two pi. <laughs> two what? Two pi. Two pi. Two pi. Do you not know who two pi is? Oh, okay. I was like, wow. Two pi is like <laughs> before your time. He's dead before you were born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when did he die? Were you a long time ago? Well, I'm also like 23. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, kudos to you for completing your education. <laughs> um, okay, so if we go to multiples of pi, like half rotations around the circle, we just keep getting zero for the sign. You see that? That kind of brings up this periodic nature of sign. Kind of cycles through zero, and then it's zero again. You come back around, it's going to be zero. It's going to be zero, 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 zero. And in between there, it's going to be cycling through other values that keep coming up over and over and over. All right, so here's pi, and here's zero. So where is this? What angle would this be? Half. Half, Half of pi, pi divided by two, pi over two. What is the sign of pi over two? One. One. There you go. It's your time to shine. Okay. Where would this be? This is pi over two. This is pi. Where would this be? Two pi over two. This would be two pi over two. Oh, I mean, three pi over two. Three pi over two. Negative one, zero. What about this? What? Okay, this one's a little bit tricky because it's it's not going to be marked here because we've gone to pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, and we've gone two, past two pi. Where does that put us? Half pi. Two pi and a half a pi. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Two pi and a half a pi. Now we just need to get a common denominator of two. So that make this four. What's that? Four pi over two. Four pi over two plus one pi over two. Five pi over two. Okay, this is five pi over two. And then the other one would be seven pi over two. And the next one would be seven pi over two. And then nine pi over two. And then nine, yeah, we add two to the numerator. So what, it would be the uh, sine of five pi over two. Five pi over two puts us right here. Uh, one. One. So now you see this, why this is going up and down and up and down. It's switching between 1 and then down to negative 1, and up to 1 again and down to negative 1. As we circle around and around and around and trace out bigger and bigger angles, we just keep seeing the same sign values over and over. And it becomes pretty clear that that would be negative 1, and then 0, and then 1, and 0, and then negative 1, and then up and down and up and down. If we move this over here, get this out of the way. We can plot some points over here as well. All right, here's negative pi. Where is negative pi in the unit circle? Zero. No. Negative pi would be? Over here. Hold on a sec. So 
So it's over here, but we can just go this direction. What's the sign of that angle? Zero. It's also zero. Negative two pi. Zero, zero, zero. We said this already. Multiples of pi have a sign of zero. All right, so this would be negative pi over two. So we go to negative pi over two. What's the sign of negative pi over two? Negative one. Negative one. Okay, we move back here to negative three pi over two. One, two, three pi. Three pi over two. One, two, three. What's the sign of three pi over two? Um. So here's negative three pi over two. What's the sign of negative three pi over two? One. And then zero. And then we're going to come back around to here to negative five pi over two. And it's going to be negative one. And then we're going to come up here, it's going to be one. And it's going to go back and forth, and we're not surprised. Okay, let's, uh, just as a quick illustration here. Let's go between zero and pi. Let's cut that into three pieces, OK? So I'm just guessing here, uh, right there and there. So then how big would this be? What would this angle be right there? I've cut this into three pieces from here to there. Three pi over six. Pi, take a pi, divide it by three. So that'd be pi over three. Pi over three. But what about this? What if I then cut that in half? Pi over six. Pi over six. Half of a third is a sixth. Okay, let's look at pi over six. What's the sign of pi over six? One half. One half. What's the sign of pi over three? Root three over two. Root three over two. How big is that? Like, can we find the decimal for root three over two? Take our calculators, take the square root of 3, divide it by 2. 0. 0.866. 0.866. 0.866. Let's see. Here's 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.86, something like that. Uh, if we go right here to, to uh, what, what angle would this be right here? Well, it's right on this guy right here. Pi over 4. Pi over 4. What's the sign of pi over 4? Two over two. Root 2 over 2. What's that as a decimal? 0.7. What do you think of that fix for? I'm thinking. <laughs> Can I help you? No. Okay, you, you got it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to be helpful. That's all. <laughs> 0.71 somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, and we can keep doing that for all of these. And we can, how many points can we plot? Mm -hmm. What? A million gazillion. Million gazillion. Exactly right. No more than that. Actually, do a million gazillion times a million gazillion times a million gazillion. There's an infinite number of points that we can make. Okay, and if I were to plot all of these points, what shape would I start to see? That wave, the sine wave. That's the sine wave. Feels good, right? Feels really good. If you have graphed sine wave. Any questions about that? You see what the what, what's going on here? I know it's weird because we've been used to looking at the sine on a circle, and it just goes round and round in a circle, and then somehow I remember being confused by this and thinking like, now it's a wave. I don't, why does this wave look like this? Okay, and hopefully I've explained it fully enough that it makes a little more sense than it made to me when I was a student. Okay. You see the sine values just go up and down between 1 and negative 1. All right. So we'll talk about the amplitude and the period here in a second, but let's try to graph the cosine wave and see what that looks like. So we'll get, you got another piece of paper there, you got uh, four graphs on your papers.
Y equals the cosine of X. Now, it's going to be 1. Um, okay, so now we're So let's start with zero, to zero radians. Excuse me, zero radians. What is the cosine of zero radians? One. One. What's the, let's go to pi. What's the cosine of pi radians? Minus one. Minus one. What about two pi? One. One. Three pi. Minus one. Four pi. One. Yeah. Okay. So Probably going to go through zero somewhere in here, don't you think? Where does it go through zero? Uh, half. Half of pi? Every half of pi. Well, every every half of pi plus another pi. Not every half of pi. This would be a half of pi as well. It would be two halves of pi. Oh, God. And in the other direction, the pattern continues. Not surprising, because the cosine value flip-flops back and forth just like the sine does. Just that, you know, it has a different value at different times. Cosine wave looks like this. All right, so we got the basics. Okay. We got the basics of, of what makes the sine and the cosine look different. Okay. The sine and cosine look very similar. They're just kind of like shifted a little bit off of one another. Uh, if we look at the sine wave and compare it to the cosine wave, and I'm going to take this animation of flipping the pages off and just go back and forth. And what's the difference between the two? They look like they're just, just shifted off one. Oh, 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 no. Right? So it just looks like sine is a little bit to the right of the cosine. Okay, something that's helpful is that the sine it starts out at zero and goes up to one. Cosine. Uh, Starts up here at one, goes down to zero, and that's how it starts its waviness. That's how it starts its pattern off. Okay. So as we go to graph this cosine and sine, that's a helpful thing to remember. Right in the middle, there's not really a middle, right? If you think about it, there's not really a middle. We can call this the middle just as easily as we can call this the middle. So there's not really a middle. But in the middle, at the origin, right there, at x equals zero, cosine starts off at one, goes down, Sine starts off at zero and goes up. Okay, it's a helpful little thing to remember when you're trying to graph these. Okay. All right, let's see how much you remember from what I said at the beginning. Remember if you remember what this. See if you remember what this word means, uh, and if you can answer this question. What's the amplitude of this sine wave? One. 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 From the middle, right there, like the other middle, up to the top. How about for the cosine wave? What's the amplitude of the cosine wave? One. Okay, that was pretty easy. From the middle up to the top is one. So we'll, in a minute, change the amplitude by changing the equation. Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, all right, that's the first thing we're going to do, but let's first also talk about the period. How long is the period of the sine wave? Two. Two what? Pi. Tell me two. Like pi is a symbol for radians. It's not. It's a symbol for 3.14. Okay? It's, it's a number. Two pi is how long it takes to start the, the pattern over. And that's true whether I look at it from here to here, or from here to there, from here to there. Right? It's always two pi. The horizontal is always two pi. All right, and we're going to also later change the period of the graph so that it takes either less time or more time to go through a full cycle, okay? That's what we call this shape right here is one cycle. It's a shape that will repeat itself. Or, or if we took it and repeated itself, we would create the graph. All right. So onward to changing the amplitude. You ready? Okay. I want you to take a guess. We're going to use the sine wave, we're going to create a sine wave, but we're going to create a sine wave that has a different amplitude, and that's all I'm going to tell you, and I want you to say from there, if I started to write the equation y equals and then something with the sine, what do you think I would change 
about the equation that would cause the amplitude to be different. It could be bigger, it could be smaller. Um, two times the sign. Two times the sign or something? Two times the sign? Okay, if we do two times the sign, what would be your guess? Like, what would it do? It make the, the amplitude bigger or smaller? Bigger. Anything bigger? Yeah. Okay, so you ready to try it out? Yeah. Let's, let's create a table so that we don't get mixed up at all. Are we using the graphs on the back then? Yeah. I only have four, because at some point... Ah, it's upside down. Yeah. Blame Sarah. I, I yelled at her about oh, that. She didn't seem to care too much. She doesn't care about me. But... <laughs> I was like, I see it. We're doing awful. So, That's amazing. She, just, she messes up. She's like, I That's how I put my fingers. It's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, let's create a table so we make sure we don't get mixed up. So we'll start with x, and this will be this, uh, two times the sine of x. We'll see what happens. Uh, so x will start with 0, and then we found like pi over 2 was a good one, and pi, and 3 pi over 2. Like These are good values to use, put in for sine of x. So we got the sine of 0. What's the sine of 0? Zero? 0. Times 2? Zero. 0. Is 0. That's 2 times 0. Sine of pi over 2? 1 times 2? Two, 2. Is 2. Sounds like the code was right here. Sine of pi? Sine of pi? Sine of two. pi? Two? Sine of pi is two? No. What's the sine of pi? Look at the corner circle. What's the sine of pi? Tell me. Negative one. Zero. Zero. Look at your unit circle. Yeah. Come on. Sine of pi is zero. Zero times two. Zero. Okay, three pi over two. Sine of three pi over two. Negative one, so negative one times two, negative two, and then we'll come back to zero again, of course. So zero, and then pi over two comma two, and then pi comma zero, and then three pi over two comma negative two, and then two pi comma zero, and that's how it goes. So what have we changed? Amplitude. What is the amplitude? Two. Instead of? One. Wow, you guys are good today. Two. Amplitude of two instead of an amplitude of one. sine of x times a number, and that seems to change the amplitude, right? All right. Now I'm going to make that number negative, and something other than 2, and see how you guys do. Right. Creating a table will be a helpful thing to do, so I try and create a table before you uh, start drawing your curve. Or, I mean, and paste. All right, so I want you to graph, actually I'm going to use the cosine of x, and I want you to do negative 1.5 times the cosine of x. Table. Not too hard. Cool. All right, get my table started here. And let's go. Cosine of x. Cosine of zero <coughs> is zero. One. I mean one. Cosine of zero is one. One times negative one point five. Negative one point five. So it goes from being a positive value to a negative value. Zero, negative one point five. It's made into a negative rather than rather than starting up here and going down, it starts down here and goes up like that. Okay, uh, pi, pi over two, cosine of pi over two? Plus, uh, zero, zero times anything, it doesn't matter, it's zero. Three pi over two, cosine of three pi over two. One point five. Negative. Ne negative. Answer my question. Wait, cosine negative. of three pi over two. Cosine of three pi over two. Yeah, zero. zero. What are you asking? Uh, oh, sorry. I'm looking. You're right. Cosine of pi. I'm changing my question to cosine of pi. Negative one. Negative one. 
Negative 1 times negative 1.5. Positive 1.5. 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2, 0 times negative 1.5, 0. 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi. No. Negative one. Cosine of 2 pi. Times negative 1.5. Oh. Negative 1.5. 0, negative 1.5, pi over 2, 0, pi, 1.5, 3 pi over 2, 0, 2 pi, negative 1.5, and it starts over again. That's, we've, we've graphed one full, what? Wait, what? Uh, period. 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 Yeah. Or cycle. They're almost interchangeable. The shape is the cycle, the period is, well, that is the horizontal distance. Curve, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. One full cycle through. There it is. All right, and if we repeat that over and over and over, in fact, if I take it and oh duplicate it and move it over here, it's just going to keep repeating itself over and over and over. Yeah, look at paper too. Why don't we get smaller? Because it's like <laughs> All right, so putting negative 1.5 in front of the cosine and multiplying, what did that change about the graph? It made it negative. Okay, so it made it flipped upside down because of negative. And what else did it change? The amplitude. The amplitude, and what is the amplitude? 1.5. Nice. What I was expecting to hear was maybe negative 1.5, but no. It's always from the, the midway to the top. top. Yes. Yeah. Always positive. <laughs> From here, there is 1.5, so the amplitude is 1.5, and the period is 2 pi, right? Period didn't change, still takes 2 pi to go through a full cycle. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So now let's draw a conclusion. Let's generalize this. Generalize for y equals a, some number, times the sine of x. Or this is also true of a times cosine of x. So either one. How do we figure out what the amplitude is? Uh, Just from looking at that equation. A. 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 Is it exactly a? If we measure from the middle to the top, what kind of number will we never get? Zero. It's zero. If we put a zero there, that's a count. Oh. Remember how I thought you might say the oh, wrong amplitude never get a here? Negative. Never get a negative. So how do we make sure we always get positive? Absolute value of A. Oh. That was smart. Absolute value of that number out in front. Good work. Thank you, Shane. So big A, the amplitude, equals the absolute value of little a, the number that you're multiplying by sine of x or cosine of x. What is little a? Uh, little a is, well, it's just right up there. You see little a is the number that's multiplied by sine of x or cosine of x. So in the two examples that we've done, 2, at, two would be a for the first one, and negative 1.5 would be a for the other. So we've changed the amplitude. What's the other thing that we talked about? Period. 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 So now we're going to figure out what can we do to the equation that would change the period? What would cause it to take longer or shorter to go through one full cycle? Minus. Well, you think about that for a second. I'm going to get set up on this next page. That's not what I wanted. So we'll use the, the sign. Okay, so what would you think? If we multiply outside, like if we put something right here, do you think that's going to change the period? No. No, that changed the amplitude. I think you got to add a subtract. Add something after the fact? Yeah. Like sine of x plus something? Yeah. Okay, let's do plus one, because one's an easy number, right? Okay. So, <coughs> now, it's really good about this, and you, you, 
you think through everything, then you don't need the table, but I think a table is a really helpful thing to make. So let's make a table so we don't mix, mix anything up. Start with x, and then we'll plug that into sine of x, and then we'll add in 1, right? So we'll take sine of x, and then we'll add in 1. Like, we're not going to add 1 to x, and then take the sine. Uh, we'll start with 0, and then go to uh, pi over 2, and then pi, and 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. No. What's the sign of zero? One. What? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero, that's what we have so far, plus one. One. Is one, zero plus one, good job. Sign of pi over two, what's the sign one. of pi two? One plus one, okay. Oh. Sign of pi? Zero. Zero, zero plus one? one. Sign of three pi over two? Negative one. Negative one plus one? Zero. Zero. Sine of 2 pi, 0 plus 1. OK, let's graph this. 0 comma 1, pi over 2 comma 2, pi comma 1, 3 pi over 2 comma 0, 2 pi comma 1. And then we're just going to keep going up and down like that. It moved it up. Yeah, it moved it vertically in the y-axis. What's the period? Same. Still 2 pi. You see from here to there, it's still 2 pi. It goes through a full shape, a full cycle. We could repeat that, copy and paste it, and we'd have the sine wave. So what do we conclude from this experiment? Our, that didn't work. Our hypothesis was incorrect. We reject the not, hypothesis. It was not supported. By the <laughs> it's not supported by the evidence. I'm taking two science classes next year. Here's the evidence. Yes, the evidence does not support our hypothesis that adding one will change the period. Something's got to, right? We've got to be able to do that. That's, we're scientists. We've got to be able to figure that out. So let's take another guess. Let's make another hypothesis. What do you think we could do to the equation that would cause the period to be different? We would divide. Divide what? Divide the sine of x. Divide the sine of x. So try. So I try y equals the sine of x divided by 2, yeah. something like that. But let me just rephrase that and maybe see what you think then. y equals 1 half times the sine of x. Okay. I'm going to make the amplitude 1 half of, of 1. I'm going to put it 1 half. OK, so dividing is the same as multiplying by a fraction. All right. So no, period doesn't change. Amplitude changes, though. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that suggestion and we're going to keep moving on. <laughs> what? Let's try something. We, we tried multiplying the sine of x. Okay, that changed the amplitude. Whether we multiply by 2 or 1 half or negative 1.5. Uh, I tried adding something that just moved it up and down. What about if you like square it or something? Sine of x and then square it? Yeah. Sine of x and then square that. Okay? Sine of x and then square it. What I want you to think about here is you're still taking the sine of the same thing. What are you really changing? You're just changing the y value. You're, you're squaring it, which will make it a little different. It'll change to the y value, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's, it's changing the x values so that we get that shape, but like, like it takes longer, like we have a bigger period or a, a smaller period, something like that. So let's try it. Something interesting, an interesting shape will come up, uh, but we'll find out. Uh, why am I writing that? That won't work. That. Um, yeah. So x and then the sine of x squared after we take the sine. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. What's the sign of zero? One. Zero. 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 Square zero. 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 Power two. Sign of power two? One. One. And square one? One. One. Sign of pi? Zero. Zero squared is zero. Three pi over two? And that was negative one squared. One. Positive one. Oh, okay, so that's pretty, that's different. That's pretty interesting. So, like, we'll never get a negative number out of this, right? We're always going to square it. Uh, sine of 2 pi? Zero. zero. 
square zero, you get zero. Okay, let's not too, get too crazy yet, but we got zero, zero, uh, pi over two, one, pi zero, three pi over two, one. Now, but we're, we're squaring it, so we shouldn't You're on expect. One half. Yeah. What? You're on one half. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, but let's look at uh, like pi over six. Pi over six is about right there. Okay, let's take pi over six. What's the sign of pi over six? One half. Now, what's one half squared? One half times one half. Not one half times two. One half times one half. One fourth. One fourth. So those numbers that are less than one, you square a number that's less than one, it's always going to come out to be smaller than it started. So one half times one half is one fourth, and, and all these numbers are going to be, like, be smaller. So what's going to happen? So we'll have one fourth instead of one half. Uh, these numbers will be <coughs> smaller than they used to be. So we'll get. Um, Wipe the sine wave, kind of a, like a mutated sine wave. Okay, but did the period change? Well, yeah. I guess kind of, but not in the way that we thought, right? Like it's completely changed the shape as well, so that's something very different. All right. That's something we're, gonna, we're not going to square the sine of that. But it was an interesting experiment. Good job, Coda. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have done some great guesses. Anybody have any other guesses? a lot of effort. I made a lot of guesses and I appreciate it. How about if we do this? Y equals the sine. Remember how we changed the amplitude? How we, we, we stretched it vertically? We multiplied the Y value. Right? We took the sine and then we multiplied it by something. What if we multiply X by something first and oh, then I take the sine? So you could have been a hero. Would have been a hometown hero. Okay. Now here's one you have to especially be careful about. You gotta remember what you plugged in, because now what you plug in is gonna get changed and then you're gonna take the sign of it. But remember what you originally put into this function. And now take a guess. Take a guess. When you put two in there, multiply two times x, do you think it's gonna if you change the period, do you think it'll make the period bigger or smaller? <coughs> bigger. The bigger period, you think? Yeah. Let's let's test it out. Let's see if that happens. Okay, we'll start with uh, the same that we always do, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, it's, the table is especially nice here because it reminds us what did we originally plug into this <coughs> equation, because you don't want to get it mixed up. All right, so we plug in 0, that means we're going to get the sine of 2 times 0. What's 2 times 0? Zero? 0. What's the sine of 0? Zero. Zero. 0. Okay, let's go on to pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 times 2 over 1, let's say. Like, I got this backwards. That might look a little confusing. But 2 first, that's 2 over 1 times pi over 2. Those 2's cancel. And that leaves us with the sine of pi. What's the sine of pi? 0. No, that's not the zero. 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 0. Also 0. Let's try pi. Sine of 2 times pi, that's just the sine of 2 pi, which is 0. zero. It's just all coming up zeros here. Sine of 2 times 3 pi over 2. And the 2's cancel. We're left with 3 pi. What's the sine of 3 pi? 0. 0. What's the sine of 4 pi? 2 times 2 pi. 0. Also 0. 0. 0. 0. The wave's got to be in there somewhere. In between them. We'll go in between. So we'll go to pi over 4. Let's try pi over 4. That's the sign of 2 times pi over 4. 2 cancels with that 4. It leaves a 2. So now we're taking the sign of pi over 2. What's the sign of pi over 2? 1. one. So there's oh. that 1. Wow. So what? It made the period smaller. 
Uh, and at 3 pi over 2, no, 3 pi over 4, negative 1, we're going to get negative 1. And then it's going to go up here, up here, here, and there. So what did it do to the period? Made it smaller. Shortened it. Smaller. How much smaller? One. Huh? Two times smaller? That's not a bad guess because we're multiplying by 2. One and a Okay, let's just stay with that. Two times smaller. It went from uh, two pi to what's the period now? One pi. One pi. Went from two pi to one pi. It used to go like this, and now it goes like this. In two pi, it goes from two full cycles. So the period is pi. The period is pi instead of two pi. And the amplitude? One. Still one. one. Didn't change the amplitude. Still just as tall as it was. But if we put a 2 in front of there, then we have 2 times the sine of 2x, and we get not only a short period, but we get a bigger amplitude period. OK. Let's try doing something else. Let's try making the period bigger than 2 pi. And let's do it with the cosine. So how, how, what would you propose we do if we were to make the, co the period bigger than 2 pi? 0.5 instead of 2? Let's try that. 0.5, I'm going to write 1 half. That's because I like fractions. 1 half times x. Cosine of 1 half times x. We've got x and cosine of 1 half times x. Let's see what happens. We'll try the same as usual. 0. Starting off with the cosine of 0 times 1 half, 0 times 1 half, 0, cosine of 0. Yeah. 1. Okay, cosine of 0. Right, cosine of 1 half times pi over 2, cosine of 1 half times pi over 2, which just comes out to be 1 pi over 4. Pi over 4, what's the cosine of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2 which is, we, we learned earlier, about 0.71, so that we can get a good estimate of where it is on the graph. So the cosine of 2, no, sorry, 1 half times pi, that's the cosine of pi over 2. What's the cosine of pi over 2? Uh, what? Zero. 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 The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Let's look at what we've done so far. Put in 0, we got out 1. Put in pi over 2, we're at 0.71, root 2 over 2. Now we put in pi, and we have finally come down to the x-axis, where normally we would have been to the x-axis at pi over 2, right? Yeah. Okay, let's keep it going. 3 pi over 2, cosine of 1 half times 3 pi over 2. This will come out to be 3 pi over 4. What's the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. Negative. Negative root 2 over 2. Negative root 2 over 2. Negative times 0.71. And 2 pi. Cosine of 1 half times 2 pi. 2's cancel. We're left with the cosine of pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. Okay, negative 0. Cosine of 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, negative 0.71, negative root 2 over 2. Uh, we go to 2 pi, we get negative 1. How much of a cycle is that? We know what the cosine wave looks like, right? That's a full cycle? You can just keep repeating that shape? That's a half of a cycle. Right? So half of a cycle is 2 pi, so how much is the full period? 4 pi. Two of those, which is 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi. 4 pi. So multiplying by 2, multiplying x by 2 made the period <coughs> smaller. That's I'm referencing this guy right here. Made it smaller, made it half as big. And this one made it twice as big. 
seems to be some kind of like an inverse relationship here. Yeah. Um, so let's just start. Um, I'll give you a graph. You make a guess. I'll tell you if you're right. And then you just go ahead and graph it knowing what you know. Y equals the sine of one third x. No, let's go with one fourth. That's a little easier. One fourth x. What do you think the period will be given your experience so far? Four times as big. Four times as big as what? As the regular. As and the sine. regular is? As sine. Two. Two, two pi. pi. So four times bigger than two pi? Eight, eight pi. Okay, you're right. It is eight pi. So knowing that the period is eight pi, graph it and use that to your advantage. Like now you know how like big this thing should be. Okay. And so graph it knowing that the, the period is eight pi. And keep in mind it's the sign, you know the sign starts here, right, right there, goes through zero and then starts to go up. Okay, use that knowledge. Make it fit inside of a pi. Make sense? Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's see where everybody is. So we're going to graph a sine wave. We know what that looks like. We have quite a bit of experience. We're going to sketch it real quick. The sine wave looks like it starts down here, goes up, and then down like that. Right? Well, by the time it goes up and down and back up here, where should that be? Already, that's an all right graph. It shows me where the, the period starts, well, how big the period is, when it starts to repeat itself. So I know that this full thing should happen at uh, 8 pi, so just as a point of reference, like where is that? 4 pi. 4 pi, half of that. Look at what I have, I have 4 pi here, so I should see this here, right? So it should go up to 1, and back down, time it gets to 4 pi. We're going to test all of this, by the way. We're just going to go ahead and sketch this out real quick. Uh, so it seems like right in the middle, it should be at the top, right there, right at 2 pi, and then come back down at 4 pi. So this all stretched out. Right? Does that make sense? Period is 8 pi, so I should see one full cycle in 8 pi, but I only have up to 4 pi. So I'm only going to see half of that on the positive side. But if I go to the negative side, how much is over there? It goes all the way down to negative 4 pi, right? So from all the way to the left to all the way on the right of my graph, I have 8 pi. Right? If I go over here, I should expect to come down here and get back up. Uh, at 2 pi, I should be down to the negative 1. One full cycle in a distance or a time of 8 pi. All right, let's test it out. Um, so I'm thinking that when I put in 2 pi, I should get out 1, right? Put in 2 pi, I should get out 1. Right, let's try that out. The sine of 1 fourth times 2 pi, 2 cancels with 4. Making that a 2, the sine of pi over 2. So when I put in 2 pi, I take the sine of pi over 2, and that is? 1. Just as I thought. Uh, try again, put in negative 2 pi, I should get a negative 1. If I put in negative 4 pi, I should get 0. Put in 4 pi, I should get 0 as well. If I put in 3 pi, it looks like uh, I should get somewhere around 0.7 like that. Okay. But given that we've, we've had the experience of, of three of these graphs, we pretty clear we're right about that. If we have 1 4 times x inside the sign, then that's going to be a period of 4 times 2 pi. And if we have 2 times x inside of the sign or the cosine, we should have a period of just pi, just half of that. So in general, let's see, like we got y equals the sine of 7x. No, that's, that's maybe too tricky. 
8x. And what's the period for this one you think? Fraction one fourth. One fourth? Yeah. Fourth? You're right. Yeah, it'd be pi over four. How about y equals the sine of one sixth x? Six times two. Make it twelve? You're right. Twelve pi. So in general, where y equals the sine of a b times x, we're using b instead of a, because we already used a, or y equals the cosine of b times x. Then the period, how do we figure out that period? What is the equation? B reciprocal of what? F. The reciprocal of b, that'd be 1 over b, times 2 pi, you got it. Or we can make it look like this, 2 pi divided by b. Very good. So then, what is the period of y equals cosine of 3 halves x? pi over b, which is 3 halves, divided by a fraction, multiplied by the reciprocal, 2 thirds, 4 pi over 3. Oh, that's the period. I wanted to graph this. Now that I know the period, that's pretty simple. Okay, let's just mark off 4 pi over 3. You should see a full cycle there. Here, let's, let's look at the middle. What would the middle between 0 and 4 pi over 3 be? 0? What's that? 2 pi over 3? Pi over 3? 2. Oh, 2 pi over 3. You know, I, I agree with you there. 2 pi over 3. Uh, mark a 1 and a negative 1. You know the amplitude, right? It's 1. So it should start here. Wait, it's cosine. So it should go uh, like right through there, there. Four pi over three, amplitude is one. So we've done it. And then we can just keep repeating that and adding four pi over threes as long as we want. <clears throat> There's something we didn't get to talk about, but I forgot. So I talked about newspapers and, and um, uh, magazines and uh, the school starting every day, like it happens periodically. But can you think of anything that, that goes up and down like that? Like really you see it, like the values go up and stocks. then the down, what? Stocks. Stocks, okay, but if stocks went up and down as predictably as a sine wave, oh. everyone would be rich. <laughs> Right? I would just invest right here as it starts to go up, and then sell right here when it's really high. Gas prices? Huh? Gas prices? They do go up and down somewhat predictably, but not so much like up to this value and down to this value. They kind of go up and then a little bit down, and then they just go up again. And then, so it's not exactly a sine wave. Do you calculate like when every sun comes up? Do you have like a year? That's great. Yeah. Like, to what time does the sun come up? Well, in the sun, like, so on June fifth of two thousand thirteen and June fifth of two thousand and fourteen, one cycle is yeah, one full cycle, and it would come up about five thirty, six thirty. I don't know what time it comes up then. Pretty early in the morning in the summertime, right? So at those times, they would, or on those days, they would come up at the same time, right? So at you know, in June. Of one year, and let's just call this June of the year before that, it's going to come up pretty early, right? Pretty 
you early. And about the same time the next year, right? Is he gonna, did June is, do we see the longest days in June? Mm. July. July? July? <laughs> when is the longest day of the year? In July? June? Isn't it summer? 21st. June 21st. Okay, so maybe the earliest times are in June, and then after that it gets later and later and later, right? So if this is like 6 o'clock, I don't know, then it's just going to get later, right? The hour is going to be bigger, right? So after that it's going to go up, and then it's going to be later and later and later and later, but at some point it's going to be the latest sunrise we ever see, right? So it'll be at its latest there, and then come back and be early again. Um, yeah, that's just a really good applause. Yeah. And, and lots of check marks. And rest. All right. <laughs> What's another one that goes up maybe yearly like that? Up and down, up and down, up and down. The moon. <laughs> the moon. What about the moon? When you can see the little, uh, what's it called? The moon phases? The moon phases? Yeah. The moon phases are periodic. They're not. The, their period isn't a year, but it's like 28 a days. A month. Yeah. It's not quite exactly a month. 28 days. So you'll see it go through its full cycle in about a month, or 28 days, yeah. So that's a, another good one. So at, at this day, it'll be full, and 28 days later, it will be full again. And everything in between, it will have, uh, you yeah, know, we, we can show that. We can show that it, it has more of something and less of something else. I don't know. I'm sure it has more or less of an angle. Yeah, that's a good example. Uh, how about one more? How about a yearly one? One that has a period of one year. A holiday. Not as good as. Yeah, I don't know if we go up and down about a holiday. I mean, it comes every year, but yeah. Is there like flowers or plants that bloom yearly? Cactus. There, there are. So what would be going up and down about that? Like, just how open? They, they yeah. actually bloom day to day. Like, they open when it's bright, close up when it's dark, <laughs> and then eventually they just kind of go to sleep all together. That would be a short period. Of a day. Yeah, like two hours. How about temperatures? Is it two yeah. hours now? Okay, well, <laughs> to the right time that the sun comes up, how long we have the sun. So in the summer we would see our highest temperatures, and in the winter we see our lowest temperatures. What, I'm making the shape right here. What, what time of year would this be? Fall. Fall? Fall. <laughs> It's going from warm temperatures to cold temperatures. Yeah. And then you get to what about over here? Spring. Spring. Spring from the cold to the hot. Summer. All right. So Back down. now let's let's do uh, uh, something kind of tricky. Now to actually get this graph or the graph of temperatures, we have to be a little bit more uh, creative. But let's just mess with the period. Let's make the period twelve for twelve months. Okay. All right. So let's use the sine wave. Y equals. <coughs> Now, like I said, maybe we'll have to multiply. Well, the, the amplitude would definitely be different, right? It would just be up one, down one, up one, down like that. Uh, and then it would probably be shifted left and right and moved up and down. So there's less more to do. But let's just change the period of it so it matches 12 months. Okay? So what we're trying to do here is figure out what is B so that the period is 12. Six? Six? You think six? Mm. No. One, six? If it was six, then it would be <laughs> one, six. One. And that would be one, pi over three. One, six. If it was one, six, then the period would be then 12 pi. Oh. Uh, how do you figure this out? 1 6th of pi? How do you figure this out? You're right. Now let's, let's, let's find like a more of a methodical way, out. like a straightforward, uh, just formulaic. OK, what do we want the period to be? 12. OK, so we know this. P equals 2 pi over B. So yeah, right there. We want to figure out what B is. P, we want to be what? 12. Not 12 pi, oh, but the number 12, right? Yeah. Equals 2 pi over B. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. I'm really sorry. Okay, go ahead. You're good. Um, all right, so we're going to figure out what B has to be. We're going to solve for B in this equation. That's all it just boils down to, right? So we'll multiply by B on both sides. We've got 12B equals 2 pi. I by 12, 12 to 3, B equals pi over 6. Or 6 pi. So that's your guess, right? That was your guess? It was so smart. It was 
of the number of months, so when we put in uh, 12 months, that should see the end of one cycle, right? And at zero months, we should see the beginning of that same cycle. Um, let's just clear this stuff out. So we should see a full cycle in 12 months, a half a cycle in six months, a quarter of a cycle in three months, three quarters of a cycle in nine months. Okay, so we should see that sine wave like this, go up and then come back down and then go back up like that. Let's just test it out, see if that works. Okay, zero, of course. Sine of pi over six times zero. Let's try three. Put in three there, sine of pi over six times three, that's three times pi over six. Three and six cancel, that's pi over two now. Sine of pi over two? One. Is one, just like we thought. How about nine, we'll put nine in there. That's nine times pi over six. Pi over six times nine, three, two, three pi over two. What's the sign of three pi over two? Negative one. It's negative one, just like we thought it should be. So we did it. We messed around with B and we made the period B 12. So we could, this would be like kind of the basis of, a, of an equation that could tell you the temperature at any number of months. Yeah. It's getting there, it's, it's not quite there. We have more that we would have to do. We have to have more tools. All we have right now is amplitude and period, all right? We need to get more tools later on, another day, that will shift it up and left and right, and then we can write an equation that models the, the temperature over the year. And we could even do it for days, right? We can make a period 365, and then X will represent days, and we can put in how many days into the year, what temperature will we see that day? Yeah. All right, that'd be pretty neat. Um, but for now, we just got that homework right there, 14.1. Um, we're going to be wrapping sine waves, cosine waves, and we don't have time for tangents, and you know what? There's going to be loss. Are you going to send out like, a reminder one on one thing? Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, well, the TA should have set that up. We'll see.